when we lived together um, right out of high school, we had two computer desks right next to each other, playing games all the time, and uh, he was tr- he was drinking what was that chai Dr- chai tea like yeah you're supposed to mix it but I just like to drink it right out of the box yeah so he's just drinking it and uh, so he's over there drinking and all of a sudden I hear a crunch and uh, I was like that's why do you crunch when you drink? That's not right. And so I looked over and he was spitting out all over his desk and it was a, like a beetle. <laughs> he had swallowed this beetle and was chewing on its carapace. <laughs> oh, it was fantastic. Yeah. You know, we, we are suburbs people. Your first apartment was actually very close to an Olive Garden. It was super close. It was like down the street from this, an these OG. Things are, these things are connected. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there was a McDonald's, there was an OG, there was an Azteca. I could fucking go down to Safeway. Like, it was what we had in Spokane. But yeah, this is where I met Jerry. I didn't know Kara. Well, we both went to school at the same time here, but I didn't know her. I knew Jerry because I was in choir with him. Yeah. But Jerry and I had journalism passes. So we would walk across the street here. And did you see that arcade? That like place called Wonderland when we were coming in? It had like a big castle and an intra golf course. We would walk up there and play video games <laughs> with our journalism pass. So this golf course here on the left is uh, Pine Acres Golf Course. It's just a little par three. Um, But when I first started taking golf lessons, this is where I came to learn. I was like nine, I think. And then eventually I got hired here. My very first job was as a ball boy and just sort of groundskeeper type guy. So I would go out and pick up pine cones on the golf course, empty all the garbage cans, and then drive the cart around in the uh, driving range. Get hit by golf balls. Yeah, this over on the left side you can see that covered area. They uh-huh. added they added that when I started working here and they, so they added grass in front of it. And I couldn't drive the cart on that all that grass. So I just had to pick it with a hard hat and a ball picker. And you'd think that people would not like purposely aim at a human being unshielded. Isn't that a hard but, hat? Yeah, but they do. I don't know, it's just horrible. This is the roller skating rink where I would have gone if I liked or girls liked me. I hated roller skating though. Yeah. You can see it's all very close, right? <laughs> like... Well, because this is where Mike was comfortable and heaven yeah. forbid he can be taken out of his comfort zone. I know. I needed a comfort zone. You know, all, all of that was way before Lexapro. You know. It was another era, yeah. Um, right down here is where Jerry and I moved in together. You know, when you come in the door to the left was that big living room. At least I remember it being really big. Maybe big not. space. Yeah, it might not be that big. I don't know. But the hallway was really fun because you could do this thing where one person would Each stand at one end. light switch. Right? And so you could play this fun game where it's like you would stand by the light switch and then you would turn the light off and then a person at the other end of the hall would go like... And then you'd turn the light off and then you'd turn it on and that other person would go... Like a little bit closer. And so, I don't know, it seemed like a lot of fun at the time. We played that game a lot, yeah. yeah. It was pretty good, I don't know, I enjoyed it. Number 26. Yeah. That's why if you see it in the comics sometimes, uh, I, if I ever have to draw an apartment number, it's 26. It's because we were apartment number 26 right there. But we were very happy. When, when we moved into the same place, which was, like a, I mean, at that time it was $550, Series B. Fuck yeah, you subsidized me there for a while. Yeah, that happened. But what did I get out of it? 
It's like for for me, it's like it was worth it was worth paying for. I'd I be return like, return the investment. Well, no, I, yeah. At, at this at this point, I think we're we're all al you're almost almost square. Evil? All right, you're almost square. Man, that's so crazy. That place was such a shithole. That's because you guys made it a shithole. Yeah, that's true. No one that we cared about liked it. No. No. Girlfriends, there's, there's, mothers. There's comics about that too, yeah. Our, yeah. our mothers were not enthusiasts. No. They said that we lived in a cave. Which we did. We, we had the blinds closed all the time because of glare. Yeah, um, we, we, our entire lives have been spent trying to recreate it everywhere yeah. we go. I mean, look around in this space. <laughs> this is, you this are, is apartment 26. You are sitting in our apartment. Apartment 26 is and is like yeah. a is like a um, pocket dimension. Yeah. And we can, we we rebuild it wherever we go. Yeah, we've got a couch, a TV, our computers, <laughs> like and snacks. We got married in March 2000 and I made him move over there October 2001. Yeah. We weren't here long. Jerry moved, Jerry and Brennan moved over first. They were there for about a year before we followed them. Yeah, and we didn't, yeah. We, we didn't announce it on the site. No, we... Because I, I was afraid that people would say, Hey, that's where the comic started to really go. Yeah. Comic sucks now. The comic went downhill. Something changed about, I don't know, the environment. or Something changed about... Something changed. I don't know what it is. And I didn't feel like fielding that kind of stuff. It you was didn't hard tell anybody. It was hard enough on me as it was. I didn't need input. It was the toughest year, too, because that was right when E-Front went under, so we <coughs> we quit our jobs, he moved to Seattle, he was living in this rat-infested shithole, we were trying to write the strip via the phone, <coughs> and that's why, like, every once in a while you'll hear us talk about how we almost quit, we had this conversation where we were going to quit, it was a phone conversation, because he didn't even live here, you know, it just, everything seemed like it was going against us keeping doing Penny Arcade, right, and it just seemed like it would be easier to stop, it wasn't even like... We should do this. It was we're doing this, right? We're gonna quit. It was like, yeah, we should quit. And if the donation system technology had not come out literally that, that day, week, like, yeah. <laughs> and we're like, well, before we quit, one which more we time, we will do. Yeah, let's just tr put a donation button on the site and see if people send us any money. Yeah, they went through some really horrible times together and some really incredible times, and they founded something that ended up being something beyond both their wildest dreams. To go through something like that and then emerge not only victorious, but to emerge with the best possible outcome, you can't beat that. Like you can't beat that story. You can't you can't beat that experience. And it connects them on a level that you can't manufacture. Like it just happened. And uh, they will forever be tied because of that. You know, I mean, 14 years is a long time. That's as long as we've been doing it now. Yeah. I don't know that I'll still be drawing and he'll still be writing Penny Arcade in 14 years. I mean, how old would we be? Uh, so 14 years from now, it'd be 50 fucking years old. Yeah. No. I don't, I don't know that I'm still going to be drawing dick jokes. <laughs> like, <laughs> will, I, I still will think they're funny. Yeah, yeah, but will you be involved in their active manufacture? I don't think so. Yeah. I, don't, I I find it very hard to imagine that, but yeah, I mean, I mean, can you imagine us at 50, 50 years old coming out on stage at PAX <laughs> to every day I'm hustling? <laughs> like we have you know five, six, seven year plans on things, but fourteen years is a very long time. It really depends on on whether or not we're still having as much fun as as we are now. Someone else letting them make Penny Arcade, you know, 
talked about just ending it Seinfeld style, like, I don't know. Like I said, like, that, that's a bridge that we have not gotten to. If I'm physically capable of crossing the bridge. <laughs> I'll wheel across that bridge. Who knows what it will look like then. Yeah. It might just change. It might be. It might just be a different comic about you know, uh, erection. About, <laughs> a, a, a erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction. It, it might be about whatever ED drugs are right for us. Yeah. I think for season four, you're gonna see more of of the characters from Penny Arcade in situations that probably uh, are not the norm.